Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Camlin Fine Sciences Limited Q1FI22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Nirbal Bank Equities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Navalgun from Nirmal Bang Equities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, hello, everyone. On behalf of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, I welcome all the participants to Q1 FY22 earnings conference call of Camlin Fine Sciences Limited. We have with us today Mr. Ashish Dandekar, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Nirmal Momaya, Managing Director, and Mr. Santosh Parab, CFO of the company. Uh, without further ado, I would request Ashish sir to start with his opening remarks. After which, we'll open the floor for uh, Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to our earnings conference call, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as is our usual convention, we will uh, start by having our CFO Santosh Parab uh, give you the quarter's performance and the salient points, operational and financial. After which we will, uh, in, in the system that has been explained to you, to open the floor for questions and answers, which will be as usual answered by Nirmal Mumaya, the Joint Managing Director. Thank you very much for joining us and over to you, Santosh. Thanks, Ashish. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome again to the Investor and Inform. Hope all are keeping safe and healthy. Uh, I hope that you have had a chance to review the financial statements which we have already uploaded on our website and stock exchanges. We also uploaded the earnings presentation, which has more granular details. As you know, the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic threatened to dislodge the improving economic parameters. However, we are very happy to inform that CFS has been able to tide over the ch this challenging situation with a resilient performance. The company clocked a marginal growth in the revenues of 330.83 crore as compared to the previous quarter. QM has seen unprecedented pressure of increasing raw material prices by almost 30% and logistical cost also increasing by around 2 to 3%. This has had an adverse impact on the margins for the, of the company. The cost margins eventually declined by 451 basis points as compared to the sequential quarter. The company is usually able to pass on this increase in the cost to its customers with a lag of around quarter. We are assessing the trend of increasing raw material prices and the global supply chain uh, challenges cautiously and would be charting the way accordingly. The lower gross margins also impacted the EBITDA margins, which were further impacted by one-time costs incurred in CFS Wanglong, our Chinese subsidiary which produces vanillin, uh, amounting to around 3.50 3 crores. Uh, primarily on account of disposal of raw, raw materials uh, since the plant is closed and some non-operating cost. The resultant operating EBITDA for the quarter was 13.8% as compared to 157 in the sequential quarter. Despite the pandemic situation, the demand for our products globally has remained robust. Our company is also working on various new initiatives to enhance the basket of downstream products. Coming to our uh, diphenol plant, uh, the diphenol plant at the has achieved 63% capacity utilization during the quarter, uh, with the utilization reaching above 75% at the fag end of this quarter. The optimum capacity, capacity utilization of more than 90% is expected to be reached by the end of second quarter. The positive impact of diphenol plant is visible in the stand, stand, standalone results, where the gross margins have increased by 434 basis points to 41.8%, which was despite the rise, rising raw material prices and logistic costs. Though the lower margins had a negative impact, gain in foreign exchange helped the profitability to improve by 237 basis points quarter on quarter. The profit after tax stood at and at 23.78 crore as compared to 15.72 crores in the sequential quarter. We were also able to protect the liquidity of the group despite the elongated working capital cycles and increased costs. The gross debt stood at uh, INR 535.75 crore as on June 30, 2021, as compared to INR 537.89 crores in the end of last quarter. 
cash equivalent as on june 30 2021 were around 94.93 crores we are also glad to inform that there was an improvement in our credit rating from triple b plus table to a minus table our manual vanillin manufacturing plant in china remained closed during the quarter due to the order of supreme court of china regarding the infringement of technology by our partner the review petition against the order is pending hearing and is expected to be heard in a very near future construction of ethyl vanillin plant at dahej is in full swing with almost 35% of the project implementation achieved despite some delays due to the pandemic situation and cyclones company is still confident of meeting the expected completion timelines the company has been always focusing on the health of its employees during the pandemic cfs india during the month of june carried out a vaccination drive for its employees vendors and also some of its service providers where more than 800 people were inoculated free of cost planning is also in progress to fully vaccinate all the employees in the coming future in conclusion we are confident of continuing the positive trend in the growth of the business thank you and now we can open the floor for questions and answer session thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shikha Mehta from Equitree Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers in challenging time. I just had a couple of questions. If you could give some guidance on the tax rates for FY22. Uh, if you could also give some guidance on how we see our business playing out over the next two to five years, um, and any capex number for this year and for next year. Yeah. So the tax rate um, we expect Anil? tax rate. Anil, uh, can I tax... can I answer, Nirmal? Yes, sir. Yes. So the tax rate has uh, on a full fledged basis in every say a synergy of all business are in line the tax rate should be in the range of 25 to 27% mm, at present it has been a bit high because there is there are yes. some uh, some uh, 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 geographies which are making losses and in uh, inter company sovereignty losses cannot be adjusted so there is but on a full fledged yes. basis it should be in the range of 25 to 27% nirmal you can answer the next part in terms of um uh the business for the next uh you know few years uh we we kind of you know laid out uh, the path forward with um our uh, age facility coming on stream um and now uh, also the vanlin uh ethyl vanlin plant under construction uh and going forward um uh, expanding our business in the blends business as well as um in the performance chemicals uh, downstream products from hydroquinone and catechol expanding capacities on those uh we are on track for uh, the growth that we've been um uh, you know guiding for the last uh, from from the last few quarters um you could also give some update on vanglong on on vanglong uh some those said that update that the uh, Supreme Court review petition is going to be heard uh, very soon in the next couple of months. We should have uh, clarity on the way forward uh, in China. All right. And uh, on Mexico? On Mexico, I mean, it's going on stream, and it's you know we are uh, constantly growing that business, and this year we should uh, uh, grow the business by fifteen to twenty percent. Yeah. All right, and uh, capex figures for FY twenty two and twenty three. Do you have any guidance? Yeah, so so I think uh, the capex for the van ethyl vanillin facility will be about one hundred and seventy five crores, and uh, next year our uh, capex plans between all the projects that we uh, will undertake uh, for the downstream uh, products should be in the region of about seventy five crores or so. All right, so thank you. Come back in the question. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of uh, Ravi Mehta from Deep Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, so uh, Santosh clarified uh, uh, in his opening remark on the gross margin. So uh, uh, just wanted to understand more from the price hikes that is already taken with the lag. So sh should the gross margins be reversing back uh, to the normal run rate? So yes, um, there are uh, two or three factors here um, which have impacted uh, the gross margin. One is, of course, the raw material price, and second is uh, the logistics cost. So logistics cost, um, uh, there are two things in logistics. One is availability, and second is cost. Availability has been a challenge uh, in terms of uh, containers to uh, even shipping lines to getting product on a ship uh, with limited you know, uh, availability. So that remains a challenge, availability, and cost, of course, has more than doubled on logistics, So, which is again a challenge in terms of what typically used to be 2% uh, logistics cost, it's about 2% of our sale has gone up to almost uh, in excess of 4%. So you know, that has impacted the gross margin. And the second, of course, is the raw material and the lag in which uh, we can pass on. So. Uh, yes, we expect that both the logistics costs as well as uh, the raw material price uh, increase that has happened, uh, we should be able to pass on those um, in the next quarter um, and the following quarters. Uh, also, we expect some of the raw material prices to, to uh, also ease off uh, in Q3 and Q4. So, uh, our... Our target is, and I think it's achievable, is to be in that region of 49 to 50% gross margin, uh, you know, in the next coming quarters. Okay, okay, that's helpful. Uh, also, probably this one of uh, the expense we had in China. So, if all those going away, probably the EBITDA also normalizes. Yes, correct. I, I mean, so I, mean I don't expect uh, any other one-offs in coming quarters. I guess this was it, or. Yeah, this was basically just, you know, material in process and raw materials, you know, which we had to then uh, uh, sell off at, at, of course, below cost because it was in process and, you know. Um, so basically those kind of hits, which was one time uh, was expected um, that there would be some, some impact. But uh, other than that, there is no, no other, uh, uh, you know, impact which is expected. So, yeah, in terms of uh, improvement in the data margin, that is, is big impacted by a host of percent or, or, or a little more than a percent. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, I have more questions. I'll come back. Thanks. Thank you. Participants, if you have any questions, please enter star and one. The next question is from the line of Demand Shah from One Up Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, one one quick question. Sorry, uh, just a clarification be before that. The gross margin you sh uh, you shared that uh, would stabilize around the uh, 45% mark, right? No, it's about 45 right now. What we expect is that it should stabilize around 47, 48. On a console basis. Great. And uh, how much would the uh, value-added products or the downstream products, as you call it, uh, what would be the proportion of sales coming from that on a normalized basis as we move forward? So, um, sorry, I didn't follow. No. What was your question? The value-added products or the new downstream products, um, what would be what would that be as a proportion of uh, total sales? Right now, our sales is um, I would say almost uh, two hundred and out of the ten hundred thirty, about two hundred and thirty would be value-added downstream products, and hundred would be basic hydroquinone catechol, roughly. Um, uh, going forward, uh, that will change also because we will um, do more value-added products, and especially with the retail volume coming up. Uh, I think that in itself uh, will add another, uh, once we convert that whole thing into at least about uh, 4x of that, so 400 crores, and um, balance the hedge, uh, about 
35% capacity and there'll be another 200. It's about 600 crores or so will be added with full downstream products, um, you know, when, when all the capacities are running. And 200 would be the normal category. So 800 in total, that is what you are saying? No, 600 more. I'm saying this, this what we are selling as hydroquinone and catechol will get converted into the downstream. Okay, okay, okay. That's and uh, uh, one uh, intriguing question is, uh, you know, we have one listed uh, competition uh, <clears throat> who claims uh, far superior margins and uh, all of that. And we roughly have an overlap of 40-45% if I'm not mistaken. So no, can you... Yeah, the overlap is only 100 crores right now. 120 okay. crores of, of 1200 for 10%. About 10 percent. Okay. But uh, do you see any meaningful uh, change in the equation as they uh, introduce more products or there is uh, no likelihood of major head-on competition or whatsoever or even impact on margins as far as we go? As far as we are concerned, we are entering um, the MEHQ market where uh, they are the leaders. And... Uh, which will scale up as we go along. Um, so we, we don't see much of a issue in terms of uh, you know in terms of margin uh, on the MEHQ because that's a business which we don't have today, and um, we have a good cost position in MEHQ uh, with with our uh, the age facility. So as we ramp up the head, we'll increase our MEHQ uh, production as well as sales um, in the market. So that that will add to the margin actually. For us. Yeah, but they, uh, you know, kind of claim that their cost is far superior to anybody else, even close by. So, would you uh, kind of delve a little bit on this? Yeah, so uh, our cost is higher because, or was higher in the past, was only because of our uh, raw material source coming from Italy. With the age, we are on a even keel uh, on MEHQ. So, as, like I said, as, as when we do a scale up MEHQ, which will happen in the next few months, our margins will improve on that. Great. Okay. I'll come back in the queue. Uh, thank you for answering these two questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for this opportunity. Now, uh, first of all, I would say a strong set of uh, sales number what you have reported in a lean quarter. Uh, that is the highest ever sales. I would say this is a kind of strong uh, kind of uh, number that we have seen for the first quarter. So is it fair to believe, sir, this is setting a stronger tone for uh, the entire year in terms of sales growth? Yes, that's right. Uh, typically, the first quarter is um, slightly subdued, and um, going by that, um, and also on the development of all these downstream products and new products, uh, yes, it is. Uh, um, uh, the following quarters, Q3, Q4, will be stronger than the first two quarters. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have, in the recent past also, have entered into new businesses. Uh, or uh, talked about the new business, like uh, through acquisition of uh, this algae-based uh, nutraceutical company. And we have also indicated about our entry into MEHQ and uh, calcium propionate. So if you can just uh, share some uh, sense, what are the kind of uh, sequential progression that we would be seeing or whether we have started seeing any kind of incremental number out of these or... Uh, when would that really be flowing in? Some sense on that part. Yeah, so uh, in terms of um, NAHQ, um, uh, we are, as we scale up uh, the head from the 65% or to the 100% mark, which will happen in the next uh, couple of months, um, we will start uh, scaling up our NAHQ business. Um, uh, so incrementally, uh, in the next uh, six to seven months, uh, we should have um, uh, some sales coming in for MEHQ. Uh, as far as calcium propionate is concerned, uh, also uh, we launched the product and uh, uh, you know we've got a encouraging uh, feedback from the market, 
And that also will start slowly scaling up uh, during the year, um, in the next six months, uh, in the next seven months. Um, and, and the algal uh, we just put control of the, the plant. We are understanding the, 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 the production cycle and uh, fine tuning, uh, you know, what we need to do in terms of scaling up capacity. So the revenue. Uh, really will start coming in from uh, October onwards, uh, which also we will scale up with some uh, so small de-bottlenecking, which is in the pipeline in the next couple of months. Um, and uh, the revenues uh, should start flowing in, uh, like I mentioned, from October onwards. Okay. But is it fair to believe something like uh, around 10% of the sales can be contributed from all this new effort? And the base business can see its uh, own natural uh, growth progression. Is it that fair number, sir? Uh, yes, it, I think um, what I'm, uh, all these businesses, the new businesses put together, I mean, uh, contribution of 100 crores, yes, I mean, it would be fair in that region. Okay. Uh, then I think uh, given the kind of, uh, even if we may analyze the first quarter number and the incremental trend what we generally see in the second half versus first half, which will further be complemented by this, then uh, kind of a strong over 20% kind of a growth is a certain uh, vis visibility. Given the 8% kind of YOI growth in the first quarter, what we are seeing. Yes, that's right. I mean, like we did mention that we are the targeting uh, between 1400 to 1500 crores should be the top line. Sure, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, the next question is on the margin front. Uh, Santos, sir, if you can just uh, uh, clarify this 3.5 crore one off number that you have mentioned. It was relating to material also. You said something operational also. So, in which line item that is there? So uh, around one 1.5 crores is on on is, is in consumption. So this was regarding the heat and the raw materials and intermediaries which we sell. And also certain one non-operating expenses happened on uh, cleaning up the factory and other things, uh, which was around 1.5 crores. So uh, two, uh, two crores. So 1.5 is in the uh, heat in the consumption and two point uh, the balance two crores is in the heat in the other expenses. Okay. Uh, then my next question from here, sir, about margins. So we have obviously mentioned that, okay, this is a one-off element that is there in the overall margin. And uh, there are elevated cost uh, freight as well as RM, uh, part of which can be passed on in the subsequent quarter, which can be mitigated. Mm, they, but uh, I'm just trying to understand uh, whether the impact of catacol is also there why? Because uh, till the time that we will not be doing vanilla, uh, so uh, that would be coming as a kind of a product. And are we building inventory of that, or uh, it is sold in the market, and hence some impact of the margin, uh, impact on the margin that would be seen, uh, some sense on that. Yeah. So yeah. So um, of course. Um, since the vanillin has been discontinued, uh, we are selling catacol in the market. Um, what we did first anticipate was that whether we'll be able to liquidate um, all of that what we produce uh, in the market uh, was was a bit of a question mark. Uh, but but fortunately, we've been able to um, kind of come over that, overcome that, and we've been able to liquidate and we continue to liquidate the catacol in the market. So yes, that that has impacted the margin. Um, because uh, when you convert it to Vanlin, uh, we were um, getting a better realization for catacol than what we sell in the market. Right? So, but of course, that, that gets corrected as soon as our entire Vanlin, Vanlin facility starts. Uh, that gets corrected uh, immediately. Okay, okay. Just then, if you can clarify about your commissioning of the means, the progress of uh, the setting of the uh, progress in terms of setting up the vanilla plant, uh, because we have seen a peak uh, COVID phase recently. So whether that had impacted the uh, implementation of that new project, and uh, if that it is implemented, even if we ignore uh, for the time being in the China facility, which is uncertain means uh, which is uh, currently under subsidies, so then uh, what incremental business that we can get from the uh, the Hayes Vanilla unit? Yeah. 
So the the, the progress is good on the project. Uh, of course, we did have some problems with uh, COVID and especially on, on the oxygen side in the second wave where industrial oxygen was not available for a few uh, months. Um, and uh, of course, the site on the state. And so yeah, there was some uh, problem, but really speaking, not much of a, uh, not a very big issue. We are looking at, um, uh, you know, starting the plant by uh, April, uh, we should be ready uh, to start commercial production. That's the estimate that we have. In terms of uh, sales, I mean, it's like, you know, our capacity will be 6,000 tons. And of course, at today's market prices of vanillin, I mean, they're crazy, but that's not going to remain because when we come with supply, it will, uh, we will bring the, the prices to normalized levels. Um, we expect a you know, 400 crore turnover uh, next year, additional coming from the vanillin business. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. <clears throat> so my first question is uh, on the hydroquinone side. Uh, since the hydroquinone prices are at uh, almost uh, all-time high, what kind of advantage or disadvantage it provides to us in terms of sourcing it from uh, outside or selling it in the open market? And how much uh, we are in position to pass pop it on and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, what uh, kind of time that would be there? Yeah, so I do think on prices uh, have gone up and uh, yes, you're right. I mean, they are at all time high in the last uh, two months. Um, so yeah, it, it of course gives us a, a, a bit of an advantage, but I mean, really speaking, even the raw material prices have hit all-time high. So in that sense, um, you know, it's kind of offset by that. Okay. So, so um, uh, nothing uh, uh, incremental kind of benefit you should expect from this? Am I no, right? not, not really. No. Okay. And uh, uh, on the uh, U.S. business side, and we have done uh, exceptionally well in this quarter. So, uh, is it because of some new contract or new approval clearance, or uh, it's a pent up demand amid this pandemic situation? It's not um, really any um, uh, new new business contract that we've signed for our blend business. It's more on the uh, hydrogen. We've, we've uh, started establishing a small market in uh, the U.S. for hydrogen where they're doing local stock and sales, and uh, that is what has uh, given us um, uh, a bit of a uh, higher sale in the U.S. Um, we are selling uh, hydroquinone from U.S. This yes. Yes, yes. Okay, and that would that is uh, supplied from our Italy plant, or it is from the yes, in the Dominican. Okay. Okay. It is only captive. We just use it for our downstream production in India. We don't sell the age uh, hydroquinone or catechol in the market right now. Okay. okay. And uh, lastly, on, the, on this uh, infinity holding side, and uh, have, we, uh, have we procured anything from infinity holding uh, funding during this quarter and, and probably how much uh, is remaining? And uh, maybe, uh, I mean, where we should be expecting our debt uh, uh, profile to look like by the end of FY20, uh, considering this infinity holding money into account. Thank you. Yeah, so as far as uh, infinity money is concerned, uh, uh, they have to invest before the 15th of uh, March 2022. Uh, we have been calling the money as and when required, but uh, it's high, highly likely that, uh, rather not certain that the uh, yeah, entire share balance, remaining shares of around 2.90 crores will be issued to infinity on or before 18th of March uh, 22. Uh, at present, as you know, uh, 61 lakh shares, that is around 4%, uh, they are already uh, uh, invested and shares have been issued. The balance will be coming. We are drawing the money as and when required. As far as loans are concerned, um, uh, ECB uh, from IFC, we have already done 5 million, drawn 5 million for our retail when in project last year. 
the balance 10 million will be drawn drawn in this year so that would be an addition and that 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 is going to be utilized for ethyl only uh, we are also contemplating the increase of around 30 to 35 crores on our working capital borrowing because of increase in business so at, at this moment of time that is what is the uh, expected increase in in those by the year end okay okay, okay. Uh, thank you Vikram but thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of deep master from one of financial consultant please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for my question uh, so i just wanted to touch a bit on the blends business uh, i think you know uh, i guess due to covid uh, and the disruptions uh, we've kind of not uh, seen uh, growth in fy21 but you know it's uh, tough for us to figure out the blends revenue in the quarter if you could just share the number for that and also give us an outlook because i think you know that's the you know part of the uh, that's the part of our business that's not uh, uh well appreciated because that's a you know that's the branded part of our business and you know kind of gives us a lot of uh, stickiness in our revenue so could you you know kind of give some outlook in the uh, medium term on blend and uh, maybe you know if you could also touch on some of the key markets and the developments that you're seeing there yeah. so in the blend business uh, in this quarter i would i think it's about 80 crores odd is is the blend um, 81 81 yeah 81 crores and uh, uh yeah so so because of the the whole situation um from last march onward where uh, there was a lot of restriction on movement visiting customers to uh, starting new projects or keeping new projects on hold you know that in the blend business a lot of interaction is required uh with the physical in nature with the customers um uh, i think With, with the vaccination drive across the world what we are seeing is that uh, slowly things are opening up people are allowing uh, visitors who are double vax to come in and you know start interacting with their staff and you know into their plants and um, so a lot of you know new products that we have developed which we have a lot of uh, uh, potential in terms of market but of course we couldn't do much work in the last 15 months is now started so we are already seeing that our, all our sales people are now on the ground running meeting customers and um, you know uh, what we had estimated as, as, as growth uh, it could be in the region of uh, in excess of 20% i think you know we start clocking that from uh, you know q3 onwards because all these projects which were kind of you know kept on the back burner have now started uh, opening up again so um in terms of in terms of geography the uh, our strength really is in the americas more in the central and south and now uh, north america as well so those markets are are um have kind of more or less i i, I have, have kind of opened up and our people are visiting customers and uh, so we we'll see see we'll see that growth that we anticipated in these markets uh, without issue we are also now uh, putting a lot of focus on the, uh, developing the asian market we started uh, you know uh, we have a jv with, with the malaysian company so we started now doing business in malaysia we we kind of um, got some new customers in and uh, you know those those are uh, are looking promising similarly we are registering our products in, in indonesia and in, uh, you know in other parts of southeast asia where those registration blocks should come to in the next uh, few quarters and uh, we you know reading the market with uh, the blend in uh, countries like vietnam uh, philippines uh, in the next uh, two or three quarters so a uh, lot of work going on uh, in in uh, east europe uh, also to establish and to get registrations there uh, as well as in the baltics and so yeah i mean we are, we are focusing on different markets and uh, developing um, and the solution and registration base in the next few quarters so that in the big term uh, you know we are well established in these markets to to grow the blend business uh, by at least 25% a year right so given given the lag uh, you know in in uh, your sort of sales team uh, interacting with the customers and uh, but also the pressing need for many of the customers to kind of reduce their costs given the inflationary scenario across the world 
uh, as and when you know the uh, interactions begin again and you know you regain traction shouldn't the growth from fy23 be much stronger than 25% given that you know we come with a much lower cost base as well as the lag that we've seen over the last two years yeah so uh, yes i mean uh, that would be uh, uh, if if conditions improve uh, as we hope they do um, and and as we do improve yeah i mean it's it's um, uh, very much possible to to grow it uh, further than that uh also what we see is that in many countries there are tariff restrictions where uh you know blending uh gets tends to be more localized because of the tariff um um uh, import tariffs so you know going forward you know the, the business model will necessarily be small blending units in different parts of the world to service markets which have you know a free import tariff uh, within within a block of country and uh, that seems to be working well like we see in Mercosur well in south america where uh, brazil can supply to chile and argentina and to other countries uh, neighboring countries without uh, significant tariff uh, um, uh, issues similarly mexico can do in central america uh, you know southeast asia malaysia can do southeast asia because they are again a part of the the the, the asian countries where they have a, um, a tariff advantage so um yes i mean potentially much more than uh, 25% but uh, given the uncertainties that are there right now difficult to say you know if the things do get normalized surely i mean the possibility is much much greater than that for us sure sure that's helpful uh and you know on the uh, uh you know downstream side and uh, you know just connecting to an earlier comment you made on your margins in a product such as mhq uh, with the dh cost structure so uh, you know if your cost structure starts to align with your competitors that you know has a much uh, healthier margin and you also alluded to the fact that your you know your value added to your downstream products will kind of amount to another 600 crores once vanillin and the other products come in so the margin swing uh, you know in my estimate could be uh, you know quite dramatic so uh, you know any 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 more color on you know what steady state margins could you know kind of look like uh, once the downstream is kind of built out in, in an fi 23 scenario yeah so i mean that's what we are, you know you're saying that um, surely it will be significantly better than where we are where will it go and end up at will depend a lot on what the competitive landscape will be in terms of uh market shares as well as uh, pricing so but yeah but it's safe to assume that we should be you know close to uh you know like we always mention high teens to 20% i mean we should certainly be uh you know um exceeding that in the fight with this year sure thanks lot and just a uh, last one on you know the downstream so on a run rate basis why when would we expect you know the contribution to come in from vanillin and some of the other new products yeah so like uh, mhq i mentioned mhq calcium book and the others that the, the other downstream that we have right now um uh, from october onwards we will start seeing contribution vanillin will start from april next year as well as there are certain other uh, products uh, like hq and other um, downstream products where we are seeing you know we're winning some new contracts uh, in in those businesses so yeah from october onwards the contribution will start uh, and the bigger one will start from april onwards when the vanilla starts understood thank you thank you the next question is from the line of niranjan gajanan uh, sakarkar from aquitus capital advisors please go ahead so yeah, thank you for the opportunity uh, i have a couple of questions the first one on the performance chemical segment uh, could could you give me a sense if amhk is the only your chemical to drive the growth or are there any other uh, main drugs in this category which will drive the growth and what would be the growth rate on this segment no i couldn't i couldn't understand uh, sorry i uh, on this performance chemicals uh, segment uh, which are the main key chemicals that will drive the growth one is mhq any other one yeah so we have um, several products um, we have mhq we have hqe then we have uh, pdmd and now we are getting into uh, forward integration of that into nasol ag uh, we uh, 
veretrol, we have glycol, uh, TBC. So there are at least about eight or nine products uh, which are in the downstream, um, which will contribute to the growth. Okay, and what, what growth do you expect in the segment over the next say, three, four years in uh, performance chemicals? Yeah, so in performance chemicals, I mean, in this downstream uh, part, uh, like you said, uh, aroma and performance uh, go hand in hand in that way. Uh, between all of these, uh, about 600 crores is what we are saying. 600 crores, incremental, right? Or uh, uh, total Yeah, incremental, incremental over the next uh, uh, two to three years. Okay, okay, I understand. And uh, the other thing was, uh, on one segment, uh, you expect to gain market share from some way? Is that the connection correct? Which is the lowest cost producer in coming future? In the, uh, future? Sorry, I couldn't hear your voice. Uh, in the Vanan business, uh, since you claim to be the lowest cost producer after the age, can we expect to gain market share from the West, Western players like Solway, the biggest player? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, and what, what growth do you target in the Vanan segment? So, what we are looking at is, um, uh, you know, having about a 30% market share. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks for the thanks for the thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhru from SGFC AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thank you so much for the chance. Uh, so one question was on the vanillin part. So, uh, so currently, a China capacity was about, I believe, 4,000 to 4,500 tons, and it was operating in about 60-65% CU uh, utilization. Uh, so, and uh, this, I believe this capacity has been there for quite some time. Uh, so, so what gives the confidence that we will be able to ramp up the new India facility uh, uh, relatively fast uh, once that capacity is up and running? Yeah. So basically, um, the market right now um, has, has really become very, very tight on both ethyl uh, vanillin and vanillin. And uh, all major customers are um, anticipating our capacity to come up and um, um, are looking to de-risk their situation because uh, the other two players in the Manlin market have kind of, you know, jacked up their prices to uh, over 100% of what it was uh, when they were into the three-player market. So, which kind of has disappointed all the uh, customers that, you know, exit of temporary, exit of one player, if the prices go up by 100%, it, it clearly makes more sense. So, it is, uh, they, they need to uh, support and sustain a third supplier um, very clearly, and which is what we understand very clearly now. So the ramp up that that we expect is much higher um, and much faster than what we could do in China because uh, of two reasons. One, what I just mentioned, and second is they're looking not to put all their eggs. So we were also a Chinese player for them, you know, so it was not an Indian uh, product. It was a Chinese product which was in the market competing versus uh, two other players, uh, Solvay and uh, the other producer in China. And this gives us a, a position of being an Indian product, which is, again, not the same as buying a Chinese product. Uh, and, and that is also of great interest to all the large consumers, that they, they want a China plus one uh, supplier, and which, which is what we are, as well as what, what has happened in the past uh, few months uh, has kind of made it very clear to them that Camlin should play a very key role in, 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 in this supply chain for them to sustain their businesses. Got it. So, uh, are there any approval processes for uh, for uh, for the capacities? For, and uh, yeah. does each customer have to approve it separately? Or how does it uh, some color there? Yes. I mean, they have to approve it uh, because uh, uh, for the... For the um, you know, for the sensory part, uh, and typically that takes, um, you know, about a month or so for them to approve. Okay, that's uh, that's quick, that means. It's not yeah. a lengthy process. So, yeah, so you know what, it, it, getting in is always a problem till you, you know, you get your company approved and they, you know, that, that takes a long time, but having done all of that and they're knowing us and, you know, uh, they're very keen also to have this, you know, new supplier in, in place. So everything, you know, then it's the other way around. Everything gets passed back. Got it, got it. 
And so most of the demand for so two questions. Sorry. Uh, one, most of the demand for vanillin is it? Um, I mean, uh, where is the demand coming from for vanillin? Uh, uh, landscape of demand for vanillin of a total demand, say if it's hundred, where is the most of the demand? Demand is from flavor, fragrance, and um, uh, about by region, by region. I think the largest consumer of vanillin is um, U.S. Second would be China uh, and Europe, almost the same size. Uh, then uh, India and you know all the all the developing markets are all you know consumption of vanillin is going rapidly in those markets. Got it. And so the last thing was, so I understand you expect the approvals to be fast and uh, the ramp up to be fast. But so is there uh, was there a, a bottleneck that the earlier capacity, which was relatively smaller, uh, I mean, versus the new that we are planning, was operating at a lower utilization? Uh, I mean, was there a RM bottleneck or something else which was constrained? No, it was the market. It was the market. It was the market. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, uh, okay. So, so, so then, if that capacity was not operating at hundred percent for a very la- a large, despite being there for quite a some time, so uh, when we say four hundred crores, I believe that's the number you are giving for the vanillin potential, vanillin capacity. Will it be year one, or should we expect it on a gradual basis with four hundred full potential? It will take two years. It will take two years. Okay, and this 400 crores. When you say, is it at 100% utilization, or I mean broadly 100%, or at a bit lower utilization? So I mean, it depends on what the prices will be at that point. It's difficult to say. Today's prices is 1,000 crores, but I I can't guide on that because I don't know what the prices will be when this comes into the market. So today the prices of the Thai vanilla are 25 dollars, and vanilla is 24 dollars. And if you say six thousand tons or twenty-four dollars, it's you know more than a thousand crores. So probably if you can help us from the uh, from when the point that you calculated the four hundred uh, uh, crores. That was that was uh, at that was at ten dollars. Yeah. So is it that is that at hundred percent? So I'm trying to understand uh, how should the uh, you know utilization be. So is this at uh, almost ninety hundred percent utilization? Yeah. Got it. Sure. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question, uh, participants will be requested to restrict your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Shah from Amika Fincap. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Santoshji, uh, as you mentioned that we pass on the cross, uh, cost increase by a quarter's leg. So uh, are we seeing Q2 will also be challenging considering phenol prices has not fallen down and it has actually gone up further? No, it hasn't gone up further. It has uh, remained more or less the same as it was in Q1. Um, so, so what what we expect is in Q2 uh, we will be able to pass on some of those. Uh, you know, we are in the process of passing it on. Right. But Nimalji, uh, we have seen gross margins of above 50% as well. And with all the downstream products and the age going to 100% and with the new th- uh, new initiatives we are doing, and we are still guiding something around 47 to 48%. Isn't it too conservative as far as the gross margins are concerned? Well, I'd like to err on the conservative side. So, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, potentially, yes, but, you know, it's a very fast-changing uh, scenario with, with all these cost structures uh, getting challenged. Uh, you know, we've never seen something as, as volatile as this, so it's better to be conservative and, and, and look at it. Of course, I mean, potentially it could be 5 turns percent higher than that if uh, everything goes in the right way. But, uh, you know, these times are so uncertain and nobody expected this kind of logistics issues, these kind of raw material price increases. It has never happened before. Right, right, right. Completely, we live in unprecedented times, so that's why you know, guiding something which I don't know really. I mean, I I, I can hope that it will be sixty percent gross margin, but will it be? I don't know really. It's so difficult to say in these times. Yeah. Right, right. And my last question will be on LGA IR. Uh, uh, what are uh, are we planning forward integration, or, or do we want to first uh, establish ourselves in Omega and then? Look for for, uh, for forward integration. I just want your outlook on the fermentation part. See, on the fermentation forward integration, not really, because we will make the omega and sell the omega to formulators. I don't think we want to get into the formulation business in the near future. Okay. Uh, what we want to do really is that once we establish an omega 
and establish our fermentation process in Omega, look for other products in fermentation where uh, we know that we have a good opportunity and we're working on those in the lab and you know getting those ready once once we've kind of commercialized uh, the omega then we look at uh, the next set of products okay but, but i don't think we'll get into the formulation side i mean that's a very very different business right and how is the ramping up going on there like you mentioned that from we just started. I mean, we, just up, started. We, just, we just started we've just taken control a month ago so it's just in the process of starting you know Okay. 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 Thank you, and all the best for the future quarter. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Madhav from Fertility International. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mr. Nimal. Good evening, and thank you so much for your time once again. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick update on the the Lockheed Martin project. Uh, anything is uh, if there's an update there? Uh, no significant change. Um, it's it's uh, on track. In fact, uh, for the first time, somebody from the U.S. has traveled right now and has, are, are visiting us uh, after almost a 15-month gap um, from their team. So the interactions, the physical interactions, again have started. So, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's on track for what we we said in the past that 1,500 metric ton facility will be set up, and you know, in the meantime, in the meantime. Uh, interim uh, requirements uh, of theirs, we will try and fulfill in, uh, from our existing facility. And you're expecting some revenue from that to kick in an FI23, from like a pilot plant, or that's going to be like FI24? So we will see some revenue coming in in, in FI22, 23, but uh, um, uh, FI24 will be when the 1500 metric ton plant will be uh, ready. 1500 okay so how much revenue potential does that have uh, or any ballpark should be in the, the, the pilot plan there is a pilot facility 1500 that that will be ballpark over 120 crores or so but that's okay. just a pilot plan for them and then of course the, the big plan will be uh, probably 10,000 tons which of course is potentially will be a thousand crores business. okay all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Sena from Suniti Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for the follow. I uh, just wanted to understand uh, the employee increment policy for us uh, and when it is actually due for uh, our different geographies. So, there may be uh, in the American continent and European continent, generally the uh, appraisals happen at the end of the year and it's a January cycle. While for India, it is a June, June to June, June to May cycle, the generally increases happen in June. Uh, because of COVID, they are delayed. So generally, we are looking at a 10 to 12% average increase on salary. So, India level, uh, next quarter, there is likelihood of increase of around 10% appraisal. And uh, similar kind of appraisal will happen uh, in the first quarter of, uh, the last quarter of this year for European and uh, American business. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's it for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj. Uh, Vachatkar from Validus Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Sorry uh, if it may have been covered, but this uh, uh, the 35 million one-time costs for the CSS Wang Long that was, that is pertaining to the to the uh, shutdown in March, right? Or the infringement on IP. Yeah. Okay. And uh, any, I mean, uh, in the March quarter, uh, I think it was expected that some, uh, the judgment was supposedly coming by September. Is there any update on that? Yeah, I mean, we are expecting the hearing to come up in the next uh, few weeks. So don't know when exactly the, the order will come, but um, hopefully in the next couple of months. Okay, fine. And uh, uh, one last on the uh, on the CFS Wanglong facilities. Uh, is, is there any possibility of uh, 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 refitting those factories for some other products, if not vanilla? Yes, absolutely. 
uh, we have some other downstream products um, from Catacol, which which we can repurpose that plant without really significant investment. Um, uh, that that uh, in the pipeline if if uh, we don't get a judgment soon, and if it's going to be delayed for a long period of time, then we we just uh, start making that product uh, in China. Okay, okay, got it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Pallavi uh, from the consulting point. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. I just wanted to understand on the raw material side, the phenol sourcing is, you know, what the kind of contracts do we have there? Uh, are they annual and you know, how, what percentage uh, would be uh, what spot and how much would be imported versus uh, local for the haze? For the age, our uh, contract is annual. It's all local. All local. Right. Yeah, and the yeah, price uh, changes every month. Price changes every month, but the supply is annual contract. Okay, right. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhay Musari from uh, Individual Investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir. Good evening. Uh, I just want to know about the capacity utilization about the Dahej plant. Uh, so it started in September 2020 and uh, still it's utilization around 75 percent only. So when you when you were expecting to ramp up, because in the Q3 guidance it was given that uh, it will be around 90 percent back Q4 FI21. Yeah. So uh, this is my first question. And second question is regarding the tax rate. As you have mentioned that the tax rate will be around 25 to 27 uh, percent. When it will be when it will be in that in that range? Uh, any in FI22 or FI23? I'll answer the first question. The ramp up is in the process. We've uh, we're at about seventy percent, which we will take to hundred percent in the next uh, couple of months. And on the tax rate, some you can answer that. Yeah, you already answered that uh, in the first. And any any case, I just uh, touch upon it. Uh, the ideal rate of twenty five to twenty seven will be uh, likely in the next financial year. Okay. Uh, in the current financial year, how uh, where it will be? It should be around 30%. Okay, okay. Thanks. That's it for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sharad Singh, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening, sir. sir what is the market side of the violin market? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sorry, uh, what is the market size of the violin market? Violin market is 30,000 metric tons. So we just, uh, uh, in revenue, uh, can you tell me the uh, revenue figures? I mean, the, uh, the uh, uh, in terms of rupees or dollars? Yes, yeah, so it's very difficult to say. Today it is worth six hundred million dollars because the price has doubled. But okay. uh, till a year ago, it was three hundred million dollars. So on a normalized basis, we're aiming for thirty percent share of a three hundred million dollar market. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. Uh, yeah, between twenty to thirty percent is is what. Okay. Uh, will be our market. Yeah. Okay. And sir, regarding the Alga IR acquisition, uh, what is the kind of product we'll be entering it for? As in, uh, will it be just from Omega C or uh, what is the kind of industry we'll be targeting with that uh, uh, company? So, I mentioned that in the last, uh, somebody asked that question, that we are focusing on Omega 3 to start with and then we'll add new products in the fermentation. The industry is, Omega 3 is uh, primarily uh, for human health. Uh, supplementation of omega 3 and uh, some in the feed additives, sir. Sorry, I missed the last part. Feed additive, animal feed additive. Okay, I'm see. And so, what can be the margin in that at uh, EBITDA level? The, uh, right now, it's early to say because we are yet scaling up the, the process. But would it be fair to assume they'll be higher than the current uh, normal business margins overall? It's very difficult to really comment on it because since we've just taken control and it was the plant which was. Uh, shut for some time, we are restarted it, and you know, so we'll be have a better idea. We, once we are ready, we will inform you. Oh, thank you, thank you, all the best. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand over to Mr. Abhishek Nawalgun for closing comments. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Basically, I would like to thank the Cameron Management for giving us the opportunity to host this call, and also uh, thanks to all the participants for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. On behalf of Nirmal Bang uh, Nirmal Bang Equities, we conclude this conference.
Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.